Fear Street has arrived on Netflix and today I'm talking to you about part one. Was this a movie that had some decent scares or was it more of a case of, who cares? Hey guys, welcome to Marcus Loves Movies and welcome to my Fear Street movie review. This is part of a trilogy on Netflix and today I'm talking to you about part one. We've got the next few parts coming over the next few weeks. So let's talk about the movie. Let me give you a quick bit of background, what the plot's about and who stars in it. A summer of fun turns into a gruesome fight for survival as a killer terrorises Camp Nightwing in the cursed town of Shadyside. The movie is directed by Lee Janiak and it stars Keanu Madeira, Olivia Scott Welch, Benjamin Flores Jr and Fred Hessinger. I think this was a great marketing idea coming from the folks at Netflix. The idea of releasing a trilogy in a short space of time over a number of weeks was really going to hook people in. I mean, Netflix have done it again. They realised it was a game changer to release people's favourite TV shows in one go so they don't have to wait a week to watch their favourite episodes. They can binge watch them all in one go. And now we get something similar again in the form of a trilogy. It's another game changer for Netflix and maybe we'll see this idea repeated in the future. So we've got Fear Street Part 1 which we're going to talk about now. So now that you've got that great idea, what you've got to follow that up is with the execution of that. You've got to produce some really, really entertaining films that people are going to enjoy. And based on the trailer, I liked it. It's appealing. It's a horror. Looks a bit cheesy in places. It's got that 90s vibe, which kind of takes me back. It's got a bit of a Stranger Things look to it, which I'll talk about again in a moment. So I'm like, right, okay, Fear Street, here we go. So let's talk about the film then. Within the first 10 minutes of this film, you get clear vibes of what lies ahead. And there are lots of things that we've seen before. And if you think about films like Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer, you know what's coming. We have young people who are going to get bumped off and it's going to be like, oh, now we need to go find the killer. What I did like about the film is the 90s look that it's got to it. Yeah, I mentioned Stranger Things and you get in some of those 80s, 90s vibes but this is set in 1994 and it looks great you're getting references to telephones and landlines of the time and the cars of that era so it looks really good and there's a bit of nostalgia watching that stuff back you've got someone who's using the old school pcs with the massive back on the screen and dial up internet and all of those things that remind us of what the early 90s were like. And it does well to give us that scary slasher horror movie vibe. We've got dark corridors, scary looking homes where there's no one around who looks like they can defend you. So all of those ingredients are in place. So as a popcorn movie, I think it's going to be quite enjoyable for you if you haven't seen it already. So whilst there's lots of good things to enjoy about this film, there are also things that I didn't like and they're probably just bugbears on my part and you might get annoyed by these things too. I mean, for example, there are often times when a potential victim is being attacked by a killer. So they're trying to fight back and defend themselves. And when you've got the opportunity to defend yourself against someone who's trying to kill you and maybe they drop a weapon or there's another potential weapon somewhere around and you get a chance to fight back and, and hit that killer. In films like this, you often see the person just hit them once and then go, ah, and then run away and try and just get away. I think, why don't you just hit the person as many times as possible and finish them off. Make sure they're knocked out before you run away because when you hit them once and go, ah, and then run away, we all know that killer's gonna get up and come after you. So there's a lack of common sense often from the characters when they're in positions like that. Another thing which made me roll my eyes a little bit was the lack of adults around. There are practically no adults around to help the young people in this film. When young people are at home and we know there's dodgy killers going around, it's like the parents are nowhere to be found. There's a scene in a hospital where lots of young people go to this hospital and it's like there's a nurse here, a doctor on the other side, and you've got all those dark, creepy, scary corridors, but there's no adults around. And you think, come on, there's a killer going around. Let's have some adults around. Parents, look after your kids, be around, be present for them. So that was seriously lacking. And the last thing I'll say, which kind of didn't quite sit with me right, was the fact that this is very gory and it's very graphic. Now, in another film, I wouldn't mind that so much, but 
the victims of the graphic violence are very young. Like I say, if it's Scream, if it's I Know What You Did Last Summer, if it's Final Destination, these young people are often, you know, 20-something. They're playing a teenager, but they're clearly a 20-something. But in this film, you're seeing graphic violence happen to very young people, which for me, yeah, just didn't quite sit right with me. So I wasn't a big lover of that. Having said all of that, it is part one and the story is interesting enough where you think, okay, so this is leading on to part two. No spoilers in this review, by the way, but it's clearly linking into the fact that we are going to have to watch part two and see what happens next. Do I want to watch part two? Yes, there's enough intrigue in this first film that made me want to watch more. The only letdown for me, or the letdown for me was that yeah, common sense is lacking. There are some silly decisions made by characters on screen. It is very gory and it's very graphic and I'm not a lover of seeing violence towards young people, but maybe that's what the books are like. I haven't read the books. So if you've read the books and you know more about the backstory, you can tell me about that. But I didn't love that so much. However, I'm going to stick with it and I'm going to watch Fear Street Part 2. So my official Marcus Loves Movies rating for Fear Street Part 1 is... Mini drum roll, three stars. So those are my thoughts about the film and I've just thought in my review, I've not talked about intricate details of the story. I've just watched it as a generic movie and I think it is quite generic. Uh, the bit other people who can talk about the details of the story, but the story wasn't that gripping enough for me that I wanted to go into serious details. It felt like a pretty standard teen slasher horror movie so yeah those are my thoughts about the film as always i'd love to know what you think about it and please talk to me talk to me in the comment section let me know what you think about fear street part one stick around because i will do a review when fear street part two comes out so stick around for that and the best way to find out when i do that is to subscribe to this youtube channel and you can do that by hitting the subscribe button but also hitting the notification bell so you're notified when i release a brand new movie review or trailer reaction thank you for checking out my review please share it with a friend share it with whoever you like just share it with somebody today Thanks for watching. Please tune in for the next review and I'll catch up with you soon. So take care of yourselves and thanks for watching.